We're busy looking at graph sketching. We've already done one example in the previous video. This example is a little bit different, but let's take a look. Just a reminder, what do we need when we want to sketch a graph? We need to look at the domain of the function, the intercepts, increasing, decreasing, relative extrema, and this information I get from the first derivative, concavity and inflection points, which I get from the second derivative, and asymptotes. So let's look at this function. I've got x times e to the power minus x squared. So if I start with the domain of this function, where will this function be defined? This domain is all real numbers. It's never undefined. All right. Intercepts, well, if x is equal to 0, what is y going to be? If x is equal to 0, what is y going to be? It's going to be 0. And if y is equal to 0, x equal to 0 is the only option. So this origin is the intercept of this function. So let's take a look at the first derivative, because that's going to get me to increasing, decreasing, and minimums and maximums. So the first derivative, we'll have to use the product rule. So it's the derivative of x times e to the power minus x squared, because the derivative of x is 1, plus x times the derivative of e to the power minus x squared is e to the power minus x squared times the derivative of minus x squared, which is minus 2x. So there we go. Now we've got to factorize this because we need to figure out what makes this zero. So if I take out e to the power minus x squared as a common factor, I've got 1 minus 2x squared. Now e to the power minus x squared, always positive. 1 minus 2x squared is zero at two x values. If 1 minus 2x squared is 0, I've got minus the root of a half and the square root of a half, or 1 over root 2, whichever way you want to look at it. So those two values will make this derivative 0. Now, e to the power minus x squared is always positive, so it doesn't really influence the sign of the derivative. If I look at a value between those two, I can substitute it in, pick the number 0. It's nice to substitute it in. It's positive there and negative before minus root a half and negative after root a half. So this function is decreasing, increasing, and decreasing again. So let's just write it out. Y is decreasing on the interval minus infinity minus root a half. And then again from root a half to infinity. Y is increasing on the interval minus root a half to root a half. All right, now minimums and maximums, we look at where it changes from decreasing to increasing gives me a minimum, from increasing to decreasing gives me a maximum, as long as the original function is defined at that value, and this one is. So y has a local minimum at the x value minus root a half, and we'll look at the y value shortly, and a local maximum at the x value root a half, and we'll look at the y value shortly. How do we find the y values of the minimums and maximums? We substitute the x value back into the original function. So if I substitute that back into the original function, you're going to get some ugly numbers. We can round off for this purpose. You will get, you can test it, minus 0 0.43 and... 0.43. Those are the y values of my minimums and maximums. All right. So that is my first derivative. My second derivative gets me to concavity. So I'll have to take the derivative of the first derivative. Now we can do it with the product rule with a factorized version or the unfactorized version, whichever you choose. I'll use the factorized version. So the product rule tells me it is e to the power the derivative of e to the power minus x squared, so it's e to the power minus x squared times minus 2x times 1 minus 2x squared plus e to the power minus x squared times the derivative of 1 minus 2x squared, which is minus 4x. All right, now we've got to tidy that one up, and I'm going to leave that to you. Just pause, write that out, tidy it up nicely, factorize, and you should get e to the power minus x squared times 2x times 2x squared minus 3.
That's nicely factorized. So we look at when the second derivative is zero or undefined to look at the signs. Now e to the bar minus x squared again is always positive. 2x is zero at zero. And 2x squared minus 3, we're looking at minus root 3 over 2 and root 3 over 2. Those are the values we're looking at. So if I look at 2x, 2x is 0 at 0, negative and positive. If I look at 2x squared minus 3, it's 0 at minus root 3 over 2 and positive root 3 over 2. For ever, any value in between, it's going to be negative. A number smaller than minus root 3 over 2, it'll be positive, And a number bigger than root 3 over 2, it'll be positive. So my second derivative, minus times a plus, gives me a minus 0 plus 0 minus 0 plus. So there's a lot of concavity going on there. So let's fit that in here. Y is concave down on the intervals from minus infinity to minus root 3 over 2. Again, from 0 to root 3 over 2. That's where the second derivative is negative. Y is concave up, where the second derivative is positive. So that's from minus root 3 over 2 to 0, and again from root 3 over 2 to infinity. And then Y has inflection points. That's where concavity changes on interval. On No. Inflection points is at. So what are the values? Well, this function is defined for all these values, minus root 3 over 2, 0, and root 3 over 2. So there will be three inflection points, minus root 3 over 2, and we calculate the y value. 0, we already know the y value is 0 there, and root 3 over 2, and we need to calculate the y values. To calculate the y value, substitute the x value into the original function, and we'll have to round off, and you should get minus 0.27 and 0.27. All right, so let's take a look. Next thing is asymptotes. So this function will only have horizontal asymptotes, because it's never undefined. So we look at the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of x times e to the power minus x squared. Now, that's of the form infinity times infinity. Now, if you know how to use Le Hobital's rule, we're going to use that to help us get this limit value, but there's different ways to calculate limits, but that's going to help us here. If I just look at it as x over e to the power x squared, that's of the intermediate form is infinity over infinity. So using Le Hobital, that's the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. Le Hobital says you can take the derivative, if the intermediate form is correct, you can take the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. So I've got then my limit value 1 divided by something that's very big, big tends to 0. So the horizontal asymptote is at y equal to 0. And there's no vertical asymptotes. All right, so if I have to sketch this yet again, what we're going to do is we're going to look at which points we've got. Asymptotes and points are a good thing to start with. So my asymptotes, horizontal asymptote, at x equal to 0. So I know at the ends, this graph will get closer and closer to that. We know our intercept is at naught naught. We've got a minimum at minus root a half and a maximum at root a half. So I've got a minimum here at minus root a half and my y value was minus 0.43. I have a maximum here at root a half and 0.43. Then my inflection points, because now my graph goes through those three points, but also the inflection points I've got at 0, 0, and at minus root 3 over 2, which I know is this side, and it's over here at minus root 3 over 2 and minus 0.27 and then again up here at root 3 over 2 and 0.27. All right, so now we've got a couple of points. I know I've got a minimum here. I've got a maximum here. I've got an asymptote. So we're expecting our graph. I'm just going to put a dotted line here. 
it has to go down here through that point and then towards the asymptote. So this works well with increasing and decreasing. You can check that it's decreasing all the way to minus root a half as we saw it, then it's increasing and then it's decreasing again. Now it's just the concavity. Concavity changes here. It's first concave down, then it becomes concave up, all the way to zero, zero, then it becomes concave down again until we get to this point and then it becomes concave up again. So the curves and the concavity works very nicely. It's very natural. It works nicely with this graph and that is how we sketch the graph of this function.